Good evening, dear devotees. The Wednesday, and we'll be reading the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Panchama Veda. And you can chant along with me this mantra before beginning. Tabu Kathamritam Tapta Jeevanam Kobi Viritam Kalma Shapaham Srabana Mangalam Sri Madatatam Bhubi Grinanti E Bhuri Dajanaha I don't explain this meaning every day because majority of you uh, who are listening regularly, you know the meaning of it. So this is the way that the one should try to understand religion. What is religion? Religion is anything that is about God, for God. And th here, when you are listening about God, reading about God, explaining about God, meditating on God, then all things are completely taking you out from the God's creation. These are the two things. The Hindus, they believe that the, there was only one, and that was the supreme being. And then slowly, from it, all this manifestation came. Sometimes they say that uh, first God created the water, so Nara, so Narayana, and Ayana, it was the home, the water was the home of God, so the Narayana. The home of God is the water and Narayana. This Narayana, from that and different type of quality started coming, Satarajatama, and then the mixture of all those permutation combination and different varieties of things started coming. In the beginning, the God created only one, that was the Brahma, Chatushpada Brahma. And Chatushpada means four different parts. And some say there is four different Vedas, Riksham, Yaju and Atharva. So this jnana, knowledge. So he started creating. In the beginning, he cre created the rishis, monus, angira, pulasta, pulaha, all these rishis, the 12 rishis. Then the four, the human but with high sattva qualities, sun brothers, sanaka, sananda, sanatan, sanatkumar. Then came the prajapati, then all different beings came. Now this is from one to many. What we are doing now? From many we like to go back to one. That's now the back calculation. So from the one, many has come. And now from many, we should go back to one. And that is the process called religion. And how it is possible? by listening, by hearing, by having the company of the holy person. And the holy person is Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, the God himself. And he advented, the God himself came in the form of a human being, and then he taught us how to go back. So this conversation is going on. The people are asking question to him, he is giving the answer, and we know the beautiful question, very interesting question they were asking, particularly when he was visiting the Siti Brahma Samaj. Then the very educated people, the then educated people, they came and they were asking the questions. So the, when they were asking the questions and Sri Ramakrishna giving the answer, that is exactly the way we learn. What is the way to dry up the craving? for worldly pleasure. You may remember the last time we discussed about it. One person is asking, the Trilokya is a very famous person, he is asking this question, how to dry up the desire? The desires 
where from it came? From ahamkara, from the ego. When the ego is there, I and me, that is there. So I started desiring, asking, and demanding all this. I want these, I want that. And what is these, that? Objects. So one is the ego, that is individual ego, individual person. And then there is the object. And the object is a rupa, rasha, sabda, sparsha, gandha. There are five things. And the five also our senses, it goes over there. And in between works my ego. And the ego works through desire. I want that. So the moment that is absent, then I am free from all these bondages. The action, the when the action and all the karma phala, and when the karma is there, result is coming. So I am free from that. How to dry up that? That is the question. And the, what is the answer? Pray to the Divine Mother with a longing heart. Why this answer? Because is, everything is coming from the power of God. Divine Mother means the power of God. The God is there and the same God when he's exerting his power is called Divine Mother. In the Hindu way. It is Shakti. The Divine Mother is the Shakti. The Shakti if we go back to her and say, please withdraw all this thing from me, then I am free. So this is the easiest way. But only thing, I have to have the faith in God. God and His power. The God is Shiva and His power is Shakti. The God is Vishnu and His power. The, any way we think that God is there, is consciousness but inactive and the same thing when it is active is the power so we go to the power and we ask please don't give me all this problem so how to stop the desire the moment I can stop the desire I can control my ego and I can become free from the bondages of these worldly things all around and then what will remain my own self my original self, and that is nothing but God, or we can say Atman, we can say Paramatman. So this is the easiest way to understand. The problem is, I am attached to the worldly things. Now, how to go back? I am going, my mind is going to many. I am withdrawing the mind and going back to the one. Sri Ramakrishna's advice is pray. Pray to the Divine Mother and how? With a longing heart. Then he is telling, her vision dries up all craving for the world and completely destroy all attachment to the worldly things. The last and gold. It happens instantly if you think of her as your own mother. The last time we were reading. So if we feel that is my own mother, then what will happen? If I think who is a goddess, so my behavior will be from the distance, from I will not go close to her, I do not know how she will behave, etc. But for the own mother, there is no restriction. Immediately I can go and I can talk to her, I can go and try to pursue her. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling that it is your own mother. That she is by no means God mother. See, Sri Ramakrishna is introducing that our relation with the God should be like the mother and the children. And in between the mother and the children, there is no mannerism oh no the, you should not go to now i am when i am going to a lady she is the queen of the country the queen victoria she is also mother but not my mother so now I, when i am going to her how i will behave 
I'll be careful. I have to take carry some gift for her. So all these things are there. But for the own mother, nothing like that. That is exactly Sri Ramakrishna is teaching. So we have to remember that the most easiest way to get God realization is to think God as my own mother. And you have to feel like that slowly. This idea Sri Ramakrishna will develop. The child holds the skirt of its mother and beg for the penny. And ultimately, mother is compelled to give that penny because the child, and she, the child won't give up, going on crying, demanding. And before her friends, the child never minds whether the friends are there, relatives are there, what may be the time. Now you have to give and give now. So this is the very simple, very easy a relation between God and us. You too must force your demand on Divine Mother. Demand on Divine Mother. Force your demand, whatever you want. Suppose I want the worldly success, worldly prosperity, name, fame, that also we can go to the God Mother. So I sometimes say, Ma Kali, those who have seen the picture or the image of Goddess Kali, the right hand side, the mother is so benign. And in one hand, she's showing like this, that you are my children. You need not to be afraid, I, I am here. And another hand, she's showing like this, that whatever you want, I'm ready to give it to you. The benign mother, right portion, two hands of the goddess Kali at the right side. At the left side, two hands, two hands at the left, completely different. In one, she is holding on the upper hand, she is holding a sword, and the another hand, she is holding a severed head that is hanging. Why so different? Because in the left side, if you go, then if you are praying to the mother in the left side, and that means you are going for mukti, you are going for liberation. Right side, you go for all other things that is available in the world. Mother, give me beauty, give me the name, fame, prosperity, success, right hand side. But the Bama Kali, left side, then the mother is completely different. and. You have to be very careful. Give me devotion. Give me liberation. Give me discrimination and all that. Viveka, Bhairagya, all in the left. And why this, uh, the, why this uh, of the sword? The sword means that you have to cut the bondage. You have to cut the bondage, you have to cut the desires, then only it is possible. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling that you too must force your demand on the Divine Mother. She will come to you without fail. I once said to the same thing to the Sikhs when they visited the temple of Dakshineshwar. <sighs> Conversing in front of the Kali temple, they said, God is compassionate. Here is very interesting. And our today's topic is, is God compassionate? We are discussing on that particular point. Is God compassionate? They said, God is compassionate. Why compassionate? I asked. The Sikhs, they came to visit Sri Ramakrishna, and when they said that God is compassionate, then Sri Ramakrishna is asking, why you are saying that the God is compassionate? And then they replied, Sikhs, and the many of you don't know, that is a, a group of people, they are the followers of the Guru Nanak. And their God is their book, it's called Guru Granth Sahib. And they have the 
tenth gurus, Dasama guru. So tenth gurus, whatever their teachings, that is recorded in the book, and they worship that book, and that is a uh, different uh, fr from the Hindus, and almost the same way they worship, but it's the special way. So they are called shiks. The shiks means the shishya, the disciple. So that is the very dedicated people. So they follow the Guru Nanak. The day visited Sri Ramakrishna. And Sri Ramakrishna is conversing with them. The, why, revered sir? He constantly looks after us, gives us righteousness and wealth, and provides us with our food. So when the Sikhs are telling that God is compassionate, and why compassionate? Because he is helping. Now, Sri Ramakrishna giving the reply. Suppose I said a man has children who will look after them and provide them with food, their own father or from another village. The Sri Ramakrishna, he wants to bring home this idea, God has created us. Now it is his responsibility to give us food, shelter and all those. Who else will give? So why should I have to tell my father, oh, he is so compassionate. When we love my father, our mother, we don't go for all this type of uh, the external way of expression that, oh, we love you, we respect you, we are so compassionate. How many children will tell their parents that you are so compassionate? It is obviously, they will do it. And like that, the relation is so easy. So, Sri Ramakrishna wants to say that. Even an educated person like the sub-judge, he couldn't understand. And he's asking this question. Is not God then compassionate, sir? So, this is, and Sri Ramakrishna is giving the answer. Why should you think that? Why should you think that? Those people, they were telling God is compassionate because God is giving us food, shelter and all that. Now, Sri Ramakrishna told them, God is your father, God is your mother. And you can demand all these things from your father and mother. They are so close, so my own. So why I have to tell and get thanks them like that? Don't make God so dis distant, separate someone whom I don't know, not like that. That is the idea. Even the subjects couldn't understand. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling, why should you think that? I just made a remark. What I mean to say is that God is our very own. We can exert force on Him with one's own people one can even go so far as to say, you rascal, won't you give it to me? So if you have a very good relation, then you can say like that. that the, there are Ram Prashad songs and Kamala Kanta songs are there. And they are telling like this, so I am going to die by taking the name of Durga. Durga, 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 Bole, Jodi Mori. If I die repeating the name of Durga, I challenge that you are bound to come and save me. Take me to your own heaven. Otherwise, people will say, oh, there is no power in the name of Durga. See, this man, he died, but still Durga couldn't save. So, so he's challenging the mother, divine mother. You must have to save me. Why? Because the, at the time of my death, I repeated, I remembered you and repeated the name of Durga. And it is said that if you repeat the name of Durga three times, the Lord Shiva will protect you. So obviously, on the, that, that is the faith, faith in the existence of God. And that is the wonderful relation. God is my father, my mother, and so close. The any problem, the first thing I will go to my God only. 
Why should I have to go to this man and that man? I'll go to God. I will talk to God. I will cry before God. I will pray before God. I will fight with God. This is the beautiful idea. The, the relation between God and the devotee is like the parents and the children. So that is Sri Ramakrishna is telling. The God is compassionate. Friends, he was just going through the Shankaracharya when he is explaining the Bhagavad Gita. Why the God had to take the human form, avatar, compassion. Sri Shankara said, I am not quoting the whole verse, Loka Anugraham Kurban Eva. Why the God, Ajo Eva, he is unborn and he is not having any desire, he is not having any karma phala. Even then he is taking the form and the moment you take the human form there will be so many challenges. Sometimes happiness, sometimes miseries, so many, sometimes success, sometimes failure, all through. That is the life. And why unnecessarily he is take, putting on that? Because Anugraham Kurban Eva. Because he is compassionate and so he wants to live with us and to guide us to liberation. Shankara, he meant, Sa Prayojana Abhabe Opi. He was not having any, anything to get from this with all his creation. What he needs? Nothing. Even then he came, Bhutanu Jigrikshaya, because the created being, particularly the human being, whom he has given the mind, the wonderful qualities of discrimination, Vichara Shakti, so that is the that is why the God has come in this form and He lived with us and then slowly guided us. That is why the God has taken the human form. Shankaracharya is mentioning. Ramanuja Acharya, another teacher, Ramanuja, he's in between the Advaita Vedanta and Dvaita Vedanta, in between Vishishta Advaita. Bhubhara avatarana vyapadeshena avatirje vyam. Avatirya, he is adventing, he is coming down, he is manifesting over here in the human form. Why? Bhubhara avatarana vyapadeshena. To remove the miseries of this world. The God is coming because he is compassionate. Another Acharya is there. Those who know the Indian philosophy, these are Shankaracharya, is the propounder of the Vedanta, Kevala Vedanta, Advaita Vedanta. Then Ramanuja, he is in between Advaita and Dvaita. And Madhva Acharya, he is purely Dvaitin. He is the dualist. So he said, Dharma Jnana Dara Moksha Bhavet Iti Kripalu. He is very clear because he is Dvaitin. He is the dualist. He believes God is separate and I am separate. So that is the reason he is telling the why God, he has come down to help us because he is compassionate. He is having great compassion for us. So when the question of compassion came, I am quoting these three uh, from the great Acharyas, Shankaracharya, Ramanuja Acharya, and Madhva Acharya. All of them, they are logarit. They don't accept the explanation. One will not accept the other. But even then, all are going to the same about God, the God is compassionate. God is Kripalu. So this Kripa he is having, that is not the question. We should not make that mistake. But Sri Ramakrishna wants to teach us here that we should develop the relation with God as if 
God is my own mother, own father. Even with the father, children are little afraid. But with the mother constantly growing up on the lap of the mother, they are so free. And they can go and then express their the anger and then they will cry and they will pray, they will demand all to the mother. Mother is soft, mother is kind, mother is compassionate, mother is always cooperative. So apparently she will show, but all the time we can feel, the children can feel the mother is more close to the children than the father. Father also loves, but this is the way. So here we understand God is compassionate like our parents. And we should develop the relation with God in that. And that is the easiest way, the best way, the simplest way to realize God. Then, why should you think in that, he said, then to the subject, let me ask you one thing. Are vanity and egoism the result of knowledge or of ignorance? Now he is asking the subject. The vanity and egoism, the egotism and the vanity that show off from ignorance. What is that ignorance? The I am so and so. And this I is constantly related with this particular body. But the body is changing. Whom I am calling I? Mind, mind is also changing. Whom I am calling I? So obviously we have to understand that the egotism is of the nature of tamas. Now Sri Ramakrishna is giving the example because in the Hinduism it says there are three qualities are there Sattva, Raja and Tama and what is the Tama? It is begotten by ignorance on account of the barrier of ego one does not see God it is the Tama again you will say afterwards all troubles come to an end when ego dies. Ami mole ghuchibe janjal, in his own language, he said, all trouble ends when the ego dies. Because the I associated with this body and mind, it is keeping me separated from God. That is the problem. Just that much. Otherwise, I am God. We are gods. We are, otherwise, there is nothing else. Just there is an ignorance that is called Maya again. And I am thinking that I am not. But it is actually I. So the, here, the God is not separate. God is me. But not this body and mind complex. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling, this is the problem, it is futile to be egotistic. Neither body nor wealth will last. Then he is giving an example. You know, in the Hindu tradition, it is Durga Puja is coming. I don't know, this time, maybe the, it is a great festival for the Hindus. All over the world, wherever the Hindu people are there, they worship. The Navaratri, they worship the Chandi, they worship Durga in different names, different form. This is the Shakti, the power of God. And she is having different ten, different forms, her hands, sometimes six. So fighting with the, with the Ashura, that is the ignorance. So you know, all these stories are there, but Hindus are very dedicated to that and they enjoy. It has become a great festival also. But this year, because the COVID-19, it may not be like that. But still, Sri Ramakrishna is telling, when they make that uh, image of Goddess Durga, it's a very costly image, beautiful looking. And sometimes they are very big. 
and they will be worshipping for 4-5 days. Then one drunkard came, he was looking at the image of the Durga, at the side of her decorations he said, well mother, however you may fix yourself up, after 2 or 3 days they will drag you, you out, they drag you out and throw you into the Ganges. Usually they go for the immersion and they will throw it because we believe that the God has no form. But without the form, the Hindu mind they thinks, without the form we cannot concentrate because our attractions are so many. The varieties of things are there in the world and mind goes into that. I cannot concentrate. So we develop some images of God imaginary images. It is not that we don't say that this is God, but what happens when we make that, at that time we are taught to believe that that is Goddess. And we forget to think that it is only made of stone or earth or wood or something else. No, it is the Goddess, it is the God. So what happens? mind automatically go to one object than many others. So mind become one pointed. Then we say slowly the high moralities. The goddess is compassionate, she loves us, she protects us, etc. So you should also do like that. You should also develop those qualities. And like slowly, slowly, then ultimately we say I am He, I am that, I and my Father in heaven are one. So like these only it goes, it is a raising from many going back to the one. So goes back to God, that is the way it says. And this drunkard, <laughs> he felt, oh Mother Durga doesn't know, she is happy, so many people are giving so many things to her. So he is going, a drunkard man, he is going to tell the mother in that image that after three, four days they will put you in the water. That means all temporary, everything is temporary. So I say to you all, you may be a judge or anybody else, but it is all for two days only. Therefore you should give up vanity and pride. This is the straight and very strong advice of the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. The vanity and pride. You know the, those people who are studying the scripture and they are master in the scripture, they can quote from the scripture and they get a lot of respect in the society and their vanity and pride crept into them. They become very egoistic. I know all this. I can e explain like this. Who can debate with me? That is another way of the bondage. That's why Shankaracharya, in his Vivek Churamani, he has worn. Because we, we are lost in the forest as if. So many words are there. Varieties of ideas are there. We enter into that and slowly, slowly we lose our goal, where to go? We are lost in the forest like that. Shabda Jalam Moharannam. The Shabdas, these words, these teachings, they are just like the great the forest and we lose our path. One should be very, very careful. So ego is just like that. Ego, we are meditating, then people started whispering, oh, look at that man, he is meditating for so many hours. He is taking the name of God for so many hours. And those, I start listening, hearing, people are also showing their respect to me. Ego is coming within me. I can meditate. I can take the name of God, I can explain things, I can read these and that, nobody can do that. 
that is again wealth name fame in the worldly things and at the same time when we are coming for the spiritual life giving up all those again here the same because it is god's maya everywhere he has put up that net if you put the leg immediately you are bound by that so if we remove the ego and then to go towards god then only god remains and nothing else so again and again sri ramakrishna is telling that you should forget that and he is telling that a characteristics of the people the characteristics of satva raja and tamas are very different egotism sleep and gluttony last anger and the like are the traits of the people with tamas this tamasic people they love to eat and they will go on eating because their whole concentration on the body so like to eat all this food and they will be and they like to sleep naturally and also they have lust and anger so these are the traits so we should be careful we should go and stand before a mirror and judge ourselves we need to go and tell anyone we should stand before a mirror and judge ourselves in which a group i belong to these are the traits of the tamashika friends you know in the bhagavad gita 18 chapter from 20th verse onwards the sri krishna again and again talking about the three different types of are uh, the people swatika rajasika and tamasika the three different type of joy three different type of the charity three different type of the are the, uh, the things all again 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 and again one should go and read those verses to understand and then again as i am telling stand before a mirror all alone and check in which group i do belong tamashika rajashika swatika i have to go to the swatika wherever i am now no problem now when i am aware about the disease about aware about my weaknesses so obviously i can take measure i can take steps on that so it is th- this way such a man has clo- then it is telling about the rajasika men with rajas entangle themselves in many activities such a man has clothes all speak and span his house is immaculately clean a portrait of the queen hangs on a wall in his drawing room when he worship god he wears a silk cloth he has a string of rudraksha beads around his neck and in between the beads he puts up a few gold wands look at the observation of sri ramakrishna the most of the time he used to go to the rich people's house and there those people they will show that they are also spiritual religious people and the moment you show like that the other people they start respecting or oh, a religious man so this is the way those who are truly not religious they become hypocrite and they like to behave like this so the swatika people rajasika people and tamasika they will be behaving completely different way sri ramakrishna when someone comes to visit the worship hall in his house he himself acts as guide after showing the hall he says to the visitor please come this way sir there are other things too the floor of white marble and the nat mandir which is exquisite carvings so he'll be showing that and oh you know wh- who did it like this it i wanted i went to visit a temple and one person just a volunteer 
associated with that temple. He was going on telling, Swami, you see this carving? It is made of one stone. And the stone came from that country. And the people from the Italy, they came and they did it. And this flow, that thing, they went on telling about the stones. Then ultimately, I had to ask him, is it all stones over here in the whole temple? There is no God. I like to see God. Then, oh, yes, yes, come. Then he took me to the that. So these people always, they want to show that how much they have spent on the construction. These are all Rajashika. So this Sri Ramakrishna also observed the so Rajashika people. So for them it is this. When he gives his, in charity, he makes a show of it. But a man endowed with sattva is quiet and peaceful. He will never show his knowledge. He will never enter into the argument. Rather, so far as dress is concerned, anything will do. Very simple, but neat and clean. Not dirty, but clean, but at the same time simple. He earns only enough money to give his stomach a simple of food. He never flatters men to get money. So that way, Sri Ramakrishna is giving the example. His worship, charity, meditation, all are done in secret. People do not know about them at all. Shatta is the last step of the stairs. So three qualities and two power. What is the qualities? Shatta, Raja and Tama. And two power. One is covering, another is superimposing. And these five things belongs to the power of God, which is known as Maya. And from the Maya, everything has come. So naturally, this has been distributed among the, in, in the creation, among the people also. The superimposing the original thing and covering and then superimposing something on the original. So that is called the act of the Maya, the power of the Maya. Only these five, we all know about it. The Rishis discovered it. We have to understand this and we have to practice this thing, that's all. And obviously, we'll be free from the bondages. First, three qualities, Satya Rajatama. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, in brief, he has given the hint about the Tamasika, Rajasika, and Sattika. And in details, Bhagavan Sri Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter, from 20th verse onwards, it is there. Now, those who are interested to develop the spiritual quality, spiritual life, if they're eager to realize God, what they should do? They should read those and then compare where is my stand at this moment. Then these are the things I have to curve, I have to stop. And these are the things I have to develop, I have to practice. That is called sadhana. That is called spiritual practices. We always think the spiritual practice means something different, nothing. Only acquiring these wonderful qualities that has already been listed over there. So, Swatva. Now, Sri Ramakrishna is giving very clear statement, Swatva is the last step. So, what we should do right this moment? We should try to imbibe the Sattvic qualities, all the gunas, all the qualities of the Sattva. That is the last step. He says, Swatva is the last step of the stairs. Next is the roof. That means God realization. As soon as Shatta is acquired, there is no further delay in attaining God. So, what is God realization? 
this. So this we have to understand the one step forward and God is realized. He is telling to the sub-judge, didn't you say that all men are equal? Now he is pointing to the sub-judge and rectifying him, giving, under, giving him that his understanding should be very clear. Now you see, there are so many varieties of human nature. There are still other classes and kinds of people. For instance, there are those who are eternally free. Now he is talking about those who are free from all these bondages. Those who have attained liberation. Those struggling for liberation and those entangled in the world. The three. Mukta, Baddha and Mumukshu in Sanskrit. Baddha entangled Mukta completely liberated and in between Mumukshu he is trying to he understood that he is bound he understood that my desire for the worldly things is binding me he understood that his ego the concept about his body and mind that is the main bondage so he understood all this. Now he's trying to go beyond, he's trying to get the liberation from these. And from there, he's struggling. So that is called the Mumukshu. Sri Ramakrishna is telling. Now he's telling so many varieties of men. Sages like Narada, Shukadeva, eternally free. They are not at all bound. Sri Ramakrishna said it about Swami Vivekananda also is completely free. He came only to help people. The people do not understand him. They think oh, they are, he is also like us. No, and not at all. He has no bondage, no attachment at all. But that compassion, is God compassionate? Of course. And that is why God came in the form of Bhagav Swami Vivekananda. And he was showing us the path. And what was his main mission? To bring back the Satya Dharma, the Sanatana Dharma, the true religion, which was discovered by the Rishis. That is the Vedantic Dharma. But it was lost because the people where this Dharma was, the religion was, the philosophy was, the idea was, they were under the subjugation of the Britishers. The Swami Vivekananda gave them, gave them back the self-confidence. How? By reminding them of their past. And he said, your future is bright. Only thing you have to have, self-confidence, not ego, self-confidence. So that is the way he rejuvenated India. And it is not only the political power, because political power is necessary. Freedom is, political freedom is necessary. Economical freedom is necessary. Social freedom is necessary. But at the same time, it should develop the real characteristics of the India, and that is Dharma. The again and again he said, the, the subtle thing, the best part of India is the Dharma, is the life. It is in Dharma. It is in religion. And what is that Dharma? Vedanta. And this Vedanta give, removes all the bondages, all the barriers. And we can understand, we can see that the same God which is residing within me is residing every heart. So that is the way Swami Vivekananda worked. It's not possible for any ordinary person. Even after practicing meditation and japa and spiritual practices, one cannot reach into that height. They are eternally free people. But out of their compassion, they come and take form and they live with us. And we think that I be they belong to us. They belong to our level. No, it's all wrong. 
So like a stream ship, so many varieties of people like sages like Narada and Shukadeva are equally free. They are like a stream ship which not only crosses the ocean but can carry big animals, even an elephant. They are the gurus, they are the avatars, they are the tremendous power. They are taking the whole nation with him. One young man of 29 years and he shook the whole India. Can you imagine? The huge country with varieties of the traditions, varieties of languages and he unified them all together and shook them from the slumber and they woke up. It is not possible for a, any person is a God only. Further, the soul that is eternally free is like the superintendent of an state. After bringing one part of the state under control, he goes to another. Those struggling for the liberation strive earth and soul to free themselves from the net of the world. One or two of them may get out of the net. They are called the liberated. The souls that are ex externally, sorry, the souls that are eternally free are like clever fish. They are never caught in the net. So friends, the Sri Ramakrishna, he is giving us the account of this. First, he said, in general, the masses are of three different types. Why? Because of the three different qualities. The one is Shvatika, Rajasika, Tamasika. And he gave the example and described what are the qualities in Tama and Raja and Sattva. Then he said the Sattva is the ultimate step and after the Sattva there only God remains. And God when one realizes God, he becomes God himself. So that is the way we have to go back to one. As I started, that from one, many has come. And our struggle, those who are spiritual, those who want to realize God, our struggle to go back to that one. And why it is a struggle? Because in between there are so many hurdles. What are the hurdles? My ego, my desire. So these desires comes from the ego. I understand these. From where? From the Guru. Who is the Guru? Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna himself. So this scripture, this Panchama Veda, the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, the teachings of Sri Ramakrishna given at different time before different people from there we get this idea that there are also people in this world who are living with us they are eternally free they are not bound but they have come to help us they are our best friends and they are not bound why because they know this world is completely illusory. It is not there. It's a complete, complete illusion. But we are not understanding this. We are like the children. We are thinking all my dolls, all my the games, they're all true. And I'm bound to that. And slowly, slowly, as I grow and grow in age, grow in experience, I understand these things are all so temporary, so temporary. Nothing remains. Tremendous attachment and attraction between a man and a woman that also vanishes. A time come, age come, when we don't feel that even. That also vanishes. Only because of that people are killing each other. Are committing suicide, the young people. So that is called ignorance. We have to understand this and we have to have this knowledge, all these things passes. And where I'm going to get the joy, complete joy in liberation 
And what is that liberation? The bondage from desire. So that is the ultimate teaching today that we learn from Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And he is telling that three types of people are there. One, those who are free, we bow down to them. And those who are struggling, that is we. Because every week we see it and we read and when we think, oh, what is my position? What I am going to do? We are mumukshus. We are trying to go beyond these. Now we have to be very careful. We have to note down all those qualities that is there in the sattva. And we have to imbibe those good qualities because that is the last step. And it is sure that very few tamasic qualities are there within us because we have already developed ourselves from tamo to raja. And in the raja qualities, though we have a little bit ego, but we have a desire to be liberated. So analyzing ourselves, I have a desire to be liberated, but this I am not having very clear idea. Then Sri Ramakrishna says, make a wonderful relation between God and you. It is your God and it is your father, it is your mother. You have every right to go and demand. And God is compassionate, just like the parents. And he's concerned about us. And we have to say, give us liberation and remove our desire, remove our ego. And if we can do that, then the ultimate thing will come. I will march with the God and with nothing but joy, with nothing but eternity, nothing but the bliss. And that is exactly the point one where we try to reach. Thank you. And uh, in the next again Wednesday, we will discuss about it. So we have many questions. One, uh, the first question is from Bradley Gooding. Bradley, Bradley is asking, asking if God, God according to Krishna, Krishna is quotes, and he is trying to write it in quotes, brilliance of the brilliant, then isn't God compassion himself? Uh, the God brilliant of the brilliant. So uh, if, if God according to Krishna, is the brilliance of the brilliant. Brilliance of the brilliant. Then isn't God compassion, compassion itself? It's, it's Bradley? Yes. Bradley, I don't know from where you have quoted, but uh, the God, uh, the compassionate for himself, is the embodiment of compassion. <laughs> so the compassion means the love, the joy, and the and the concern naturally. So obviously God is the embodiment of that. So from where you have quoted, I don't know, but of course God is the embodiment of love. He is the source of love, source of compassion, and source of all these good qualities. Thank you, Bradley. Then uh, he is asking one other question. So then are all avatars of God to spread his compassion? Of course, of course. See, can you imagine that we consider, though we are Hindu, we consider Jesus is an avatar of God. And the Christian tradition, they say, the son of God. Okay. How we can understand that he is the son of God or avatar of God, the God incarnated as Jesus himself? The last word that he said, he prayed for those who were killing him. Alive they were nailing. And in that excruciating pain, he was praying for those. Can you imagine? Can anyone do that? If someone is putting his finger before us, we are so angry all through life, we don't forget. And Jesus is forgetting, forgiving them, praying to the God. So, so much of compassion, so much of love, so that is called 
the God's love, God's compassion, and that is the manifestation of the God in human form. The next question is from Komal Chaudhary. Komal Babu is asking, how can one know whether his or her ego has completely gone? Yeah, good question. And about the, the moment there is no ego, what will remain? Only divinity, only divine form. And when the divinity comes, all the divine qualities will manifest. No one has to come to tell you, oh, you have realized God. You automatically, you will know that. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, he has given the example, one person, he was going to meet the king. He was from a village, poor man. He came and he saw the wonderful dress a man is girding. He thought, oh my God, he's so wonderful dress. So he said, are you the king? He said, no, I am just guarding the door. King is inside. So like that he went in, in, in. After crossing, the more he went inside, the more he saw the, the expression and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, all the, what's called the jewelries and the so many different type of beautiful things all around. After he crossed the seventh door, he saw a man is sitting on the throne and all others are standing before him and he needed no one to introduce the king. He understood he is the king. By telling this, the Sri Ramakrishna wants to say, the moment you see God, your ego goes and God appears. And when you realize God, you need no one to introduce, this is God. Well, that Rakhi is asking, asking many, many questions. questions. I, I have put your email address in the chat. Right. Uh, good to write you. Sure, sure, sure. Then, then the, the next, next question is from, uh, from, from Ganesh Prasad, Prasad are, if God, God is compassionate, why does not he appear as soon as one calls him? Why does it take life times before realization? Hey, why lifetime? Life after life. Because that is the game it goes on. You know, that is one thing we must keep in mind. Even a small iota, as a drop of ego, as long as it is there within us. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said over here, that when their ego is there, desire is there. And the desire is there, no God is there. As the it always say, Jahan Ram, Taha Nahi Kaam. Jahan Kaam, Taha Nahi Ram. So where desire is there, there is no God. And when God is there, there won't be any desire. So friend, I have, we have to try to understand that these are the desires binding us. And we cannot realize God. Go and pray and pray and pray as Bhagavan is teaching us. As we go to our mother, when we were children, for everything we used to go to our mother. Let us go to the God as mother and pray, remove my ego completely. I like to see you. And one day the blessed moment will surely come. The last question is from Dashama Patra. How does a man become God when he is entangled in family and world? Oh no, that is as long as we are entangled in the family. Friend, if I can understand your question, if, uh, if you are a householder, you have the responsibility to look after your family, children and all. If you do your swadharma perfectly, as the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna is telling, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is also advising that swadharma, Suppose you are a householder. You have to earn money in an honest way. You have to look after your children, your wife. Not only that, you have to think that after you, how your wife will survive. So you have to put some money also uh, in, in, the, in the bank. So all those things when you are doing, but without attachment, I am doing it because this is my swadharma. See, as a swadharma of a sannyasi, dharma palan, dharma shiksha. 
I should practice the religious righteousness and I should give that to the society. That is my sadharma. If I don't do that, then I am not performing the sannyasi dharma. And of course, sannyasis have some other promises like I am not going to criticize others, to harm others, and I am not going to hanker for the name, fame, money, beauty, nothing. But as a worldly, that a person in the world, you can always pray to God, give me some opportunity so that I can some earn money in a righteous way and keep my family happy. And whatever the responsibility I'm having in the society, I can perform. Know it for sure. If the Gita is a religious book, scripture, the God is telling, you will be free by doing that. So thank you, friends. Thank you for wonderful questions. Let us pray over here, and we conclude. Niranjanam nityam anantarupam bhaktanukampa dhrita bigraham bai ishavataram Parameshamidyam Tam Ram Krishnam Shirasanamama Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu